I want to show you how three new tools inside of Lightroom Classic just might completely change the way that you edit your portraits. Let's get into it. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, friends? My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. If you know me, you know how I do. Let's get straight into this. You can load up any portrait you'd like, but go ahead and pop open Lightroom Classic, run the latest update, choose a portrait of your choosing. This you might recognize is Kiara from well, our other videos. Let's get straight into tool number one. With this latest update, you might have already seen videos on this. Adobe has actually added an amount slider to presets, which means finally we have the ability to add a preset. I'm going to go ahead and use the Visual Flow preset packs. Uh, you can use any preset you like, but go ahead and add a preset and you'll see that right under the navigator, we now have the option to control the amount. This one gets a little bit bright, so let's pull it down and look at crush is supposed to basically crush, create a lot of contrast and colors in the image. But look at this, I can control the amount now. How cool is that? Now for this particular image, I kind of want to go with something a little more cinematic, a little more moody and rustic. So I'm going to choose from the mood pack. I'm going to choose soft light because that's the lighting condition the image was shot under and we'll adjust exposure and then come right back here and play with the amount. And I like it like right around 115 ish is awesome. I freaking love this feature. So thank you Adobe for adding that. Okay, we're done with that tool. As my dad would say, let's not dilly dally. Let's move on to tool number two. This is using the AI subject feature, which maybe you know, but what I'm gonna show you is how to use it as a quick dodge and burn for your subjects. So watch this. Recently, again, this is all I think within the past year, Adobe has updated Lightroom, where if we go to the mask and select subject, we now have this awesome computational AI that's basically selecting our subject right within Lightroom Classic. This is absolutely insane how accurate this is. But the cool part about this is that not only can you make these adjustments, we can actually do things. This is a method where what we're going to do is pull down the overall exposure of our subject and just raise the highlight point and raise the white point. Now, what happens with that is we basically get a quick dodge and burn. So look, if I turn this on and off, we basically kept the highlights at the same level of brightness, but we end up burning everything else down. Kind of cool. And I can also bring my shadow point up a little bit and control. I usually bring the shadows up a little bit, but I'll leave blacks where they're at. And uh, you can kind of fine tune. You can adjust exposure a little bit further down, wherever your heart's content. I'm going to go to negative 0.8, bring the highlights up a little bit more, maybe a little bit more on the white point, because I'm also going to add a radial filter over the face in just a moment. So that's freaking cool. We can use this select subject for a quick dodge and burn and look at the final that's gnarly. And if you want to exaggerate this, by the way, you can just add a little bit of clarity. So once you have your adjustments in, pop a little bit of clarity, it'll enhance mid-tone contrast. And uh, yeah, that's already cool in and of itself. The next thing is if you go back to masking. So tool number three is to use AI to select the background. But you'll notice that there is no option to select your background. You can choose select subject, which we already know what that does. We can choose select sky, which will actually select out the sky but there's no option to get to background. So here's what we're gonna do. We have a little workaround. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun making these techniques. So that was kind of cool. So I hope you dig them, but watch this. We're gonna go ahead and go select subject one more time. This go around, press invert by pressing apostrophe. Now, when you press apostrophe, it selects everything that's not selected, which in this case would be the background. So what we're gonna do is actually pull the background down. I'm gonna bring it to like negative one ish. And then I'm going to raise the black point just a little bit. So I'm going to raise the shadows, maybe a tiny bit and have similar control over just background detail as I would foreground detail and, and subject detail, right? That's kind of cool. So I like it about right there ish. And that's great. I'm going to leave it there. The last thing I'm going to do kind of a little bonus tip. Um, well, first let's do this. Let's get our white balance actually good. I would like this to be a little bit more warm. I have a slightly more kind of warm stylistic preference. So if yours is more cool, that's totally fine. Get to a white balance that you guys like. And the last thing I'll do is this is a little bonus tip over here on the left side in the visual flow toolkit. Uh, I've actually created these presets for radial burns. And all this is, is a radial filter. It drops in right over the center of the image and it burns the exposure down to negative 0.5. So if you don't have it saved as a preset, no worries. You're going to create a radial filter and then adjust the exposure down, but save it as a preset because 
we use them all the freaking time. Now, like I said, what I'm going to do is pull that in on the face. So that way that um, the kind of highlights on the body that we created with that quick dodge are just a little bit de-emphasized. So basically we create this uh, radial vignette, right? That we can kind of adjust and place wherever we like. And uh, this is absolutely freaking insane because I'm going to show you what the before looks like on this image. Ready? So here is the before. And what we'll do is we'll take the before and we'll actually put profile correction on it as well, just so we have an exact same composition. And we'll select what we just did using basically just those three tools. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's actually go to comparison view and we'll press shift tab and turn off our information. But look at this side by side on this. Isn't that wild? You would have thought that this was done in Photoshop. You would have thought that I brought lighting gear, whatever it might be. But no, it's just very simple tools now that are inside of editing that I could do in 20, 30 seconds. And in the past, I would have either had to bring all the extra lighting gear or or spend a lot of time in Photoshop. Look at this over the top of each other, the full screen version. Isn't that wild? Anyway, I'm going to stop. I'm enjoying my handiwork right now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, well, what would help me out tremendously is liking and subscribing to the channel. Obviously, this helps Adorama, but it helps me too because it tells Adorama that I'm doing a good job and you guys want me to continue being here. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is if you enjoy my teaching style, kind of the, the nuts and bolts, the nuances of photography, then check out SR Lounge Premium because inside is literally an A to Z library. That's everything from picking up your camera to mastering lighting, posing, and everything you need to run and operate a successful photography business as a portrait or wedding photographer. So check that out. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in the comments. And of course, back here, same time, same place next week. Peace.